Yo, how is it going lads and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing a few different ways for you guys to help you get on in foot division rivals. Now, I know a lot of people have a lot of different questions about foot division rivals. How is the best way to make, uh, to get, say, rank one or to, to generate points? You know, what is the best team for division rivals? And although I don't have every single answer for you guys, I'm going to try my best to give you guys the lowdown on what I do and how I get rank one every single week. Now, I will say this, I am not the best FIFA player in the world it's quite obvious i am i am uh, pretty average at fifa but then again you don't have to be sick at fifa to get rank one anyone can get rank one in division rivals and that's one thing you have to remember is that you get points even for losing so you can get the 20 25 000 points that you need for example to get rank one in most divisions roughly around there maybe 30 000 points it just means that you have to carry on playing more than the people that can win majority of games. It's not a case of of if you lose and you're just never going to get rank one. It just means you've got to play more games because no one's going to lose 100 games and never get a win in this game. Like, it's just not going to happen. Unless you are, quite frankly, without arms and fingers, then you're going to struggle to, to, to go 0 to 100. Um, so, and even if you did go 0 to 100, you'd still get enough points to get rank one. So, it's simple... Um, I guess the more the the worse you are, the more time you got up into it, and that 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 really is the same with most sports and most sort of um most games and most most things in life. Really, the worse you are, the more hours you have to put in. It's, it's essentially just practice, really. So I thought I'd show you guys the team that I am having a lot of success with right now in Division Rivals. Now I'll show you guys this team that I'll build, and I'll build it based on a formula, and then I'll go and show you guys my Road to Glory team. The reason that I'm showing you guys two different teams here is because my Road to Glory is a pack only Road to Glory, which means that I can only use players that I've packed from generating coins to buy packs. That is just essentially like the niche of the road to glory. So I, you know, I'm I'm working very strictly on a select few players. This team is built around if I had the freedom to buy the players. So let's get straight into this team. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. If you do go on to smash like down below, if you are new to my channel, subscribe down below. It's greatly appreciated and it genuinely just helps the train moving. The train being the channel and the content and, and everything like that. So uh, let's jump straight into it. Now, the first thing I want to address is the point system. How does it work? So... As far as we know, it's 150 points per loss. That's rank points, not skill rating. Um, it's 300 points per draw, and it's 500 points per win. Now, there is a, a modifier that includes points. It's 90 points per goal, up to five goals. So essentially, you can get yourself an extra, what, like 540 points from goals? 440 points, not 540 points. I don't know where I just plucked 540 out. My brain's not working fully today. I apologize. I got up early. I've been busy all day. My mind's just not working. 440 points you can get as an extra uh, five goals. That's essentially... So the, the most points you can come away with... Now, this is up... I think for Div 5 and Div 4, this is guaranteed. Not entirely sure if this is for Div 3, 2, and 1 or Div 6, 7, 8. Um, but I know for Div 5 and Div 4, which is where 75... Like, this is genuine. 75% at minimum of the foot player base are in Div 5 and Div 4. That blew my mind, regardless. So that is uh, that is the sort of the point system. So the maximum amount of points you guys can actually generate from a game if you win and you score five goals is 940 points. So if you were to generate 940 points per game, you essentially would have to win, what, like 26 games to get to 25,000 points, if that's where it is. That's over the, the, the course of a week. Um... And if you guys lose every game, if you if you still get goals, you're still maybe getting like 240, 330, 420 points per game. So the idea is, is that I'm building a team based on a formula to stop conceding goals and to score more goals. And let's get straight into this. So in goal, what I went with here is actually Handanovic. Now, Handanovic is actually really OP in this game. It's, it's scary how good he is. Um, now, this is actually on my money account. This is on my Xbox account. I don't really use this team, but this is like... These are plays that I have used in this game so far. Handanovic is just scarily OP. It's incredible and scary at the same time. Over at the left centre-back spot, we have got a fellow Inter Milan centre-back. Now, this is all based on my personal preference, but I've gone with Skriniar here. He's actually a really OP centre-back. He's got 77 stamina, which feels really strong on centre-backs. The above 75 stamina mark is where you really want to be at. 
70 acceleration with 76 sprint speed on basic chem style. Um, 88 stand tackling, 82 slide tackling, 92 marking, 86 strength when, with the plus three, obviously. Um, 86 interceptions, an incredible, incredible card. And he also has four star weak foot, which I think is really quite vital to have players that can use their left foot on the left side for passing. Um, and over at the right centre back spot, we have actually got ourselves Eric Bai, who is just as OP as last year. He is just as good as he was last year. He's incredible this year. Genuinely one of the best players this year, without a shadow of a doubt. The guy is absolutely mental on this game. It's crazy. So uh, moving on to the left back spot now. It, this guy is the best left back in the game, hands down. It's Alexandro. Now I've tried Jordi Alba. I've tried David Alaba. And Alaba is also incredible on this game, but he's just not quite Alexandro. Uh, I've also tried, for example, Marcelo. Marcelo didn't feel anything special to me. His dribbling was maybe a bit standout than other centre back, uh, other left back, sorry. And his five-star skills was decent, but apart from that, there really wasn't a fat lot that I enjoyed about Marcelo, to be honest. His, his defending and physical didn't feel that great. However, Alexandre feels really, really strong. And when you're against people like Mohamed Salah, Mbappe, Bale, you want someone like Alexandre. Now, I know a lot of people can't afford a team like this. So if I were you, I'd be looking at cheap alternatives. So if I was to look at a cheap alternative for Alexandro, maybe you're looking for a, a Syria or a Calcio uh, left back. If I was looking for a, a cheap alternative, I'd probably look somewhere like um, Dalbert. Dalbert looks pretty decent. Really good pace. Decent defending. Well, half decent defending, should I say. Um, and half decent physical. Or maybe you want to look somewhere else. Maybe you want to look at someone like Marco... Excuse me. Marco Rui um, is another really, really good player. Over at right back is Antonio Valencia. Just as good as he was in previous years. An incredible, incredible card. 81 stamina. 80... Three strength in game with the plus four modifier, uh, 90 sprint speed and 83 acceleration with the modifiers, um, 89 shot power, 85 short passing, um, 86 stand tackle and 83 uh, slide tackle. He's just got 83 interceptions uh, and 80 aggression. Really, really good player. Really, really good in-game stats. Now, the only de uh, like the downside for a Valencia is that he's only got two-star weak foot. Now, I actually find that really sort of noticeable in-game. I think that with, with, with this game and how pressure works, you want a player that can pass on both feet. So with Valencia, luckily his dribbling kind of almost cancels it out. You can dribble around a lot of plays with, <clears throat> with Valencia. However, his two-star weak foot is not great, especially when you try to make some good passes with his left foot. It's not going to happen, especially with how temperamental passing is in this game. But we move on. We're going to go ahead with the CDMs now. Now, the first CDM is actually one of my favorite plays in this game so far, and it's actually Nemanja Matic. Now, he's really slow, and it's very noticeable. Um, however, 85 plus 4 strength, 84 stamina, 81 aggression, 89 marking, 89 stun tackle, uh, 79 slide tackle, 87 interceptions, 83 shot power with 75 long shots, 90 short passing, 88 long passing. He's got some incredible stats and it's very noticeable. He's so good in game. One of my favorite players without a shadow of a doubt. He's also six foot four, medium high work rates. He's always in the right position at the right time. And pace isn't the biggest factor in this game. It is noticeable that he's got 56 pace. He does feel really slow on the ball and really slow trying to track back. But as long as you have him sitting quite deep, you don't have to worry about him at all. He's great. And partnering him is actually someone a little bit faster with a little bit less defending stats, but more sort of attacking stats, actually. It's Fred. Um... I went with Fred to partner him because Fred's actually really good on this game as well. Um, Fred is really like, he, he's the kind of player that's more technical and more technically able. Um, he's not the greatest at defending, I won't lie to you. However, he's a player that more is just in the right position at the right time. He's not the strongest. He's not the best at tackling. You can leave that up to match it so because Fred will try and just clear the line. And I really like that about him. And when moving forward, you want a player like Fred and CDM. Like, it's genuinely very much a benefit. Now, over at Cam, we've got quite possibly one of my favorite attacking players in this game so far. And it is Roberto Firmino. This card is phenomenal. This guy is absolutely incredible. His finesse shots, his strength, his dribbling, his shooting in general. His pace feels really good as well. Um, <clears throat> overall, this card is actually just phenomenal. And I highly recommend you guys try him out if you haven't tried him already. He is incredible. And not only that, but he actually gets a nice link to, uh, to Alexandro there as well. That wasn't even intentional. He just happens to get a link. Because as you can see, I'm playing screen art off chem. I personally do not think that a player on 8 chemistry has any difference to a player on 10 chemistry in this game. Um... 
I think that it's noticeable when a player has five chemistry off the bench, but eight chemistry is not noticeable at all. No difference in my opinion at all. Um, and over at the left, uh, sorry, at the right cam spot, we've actually got another centre mid. Now, this guy is an absolute engine. This guy is a tank and it is uh, Kovacic. Kovacic is an absolute tank on this game. He's just always up and down the pitch. He's got 82 stamina. He's got really decent attacking, like going forward stats. His dribbling's really nice. His passing's really good. And he just sets up the attack really, really well. And I do like that about him. I think that with the formula and the method that I usually go for in this game, I go for players that either strong or really agile. And that, they're the two players that I, like the two types of players I seem to have the most success with. So if I were you, I'd go with either strong or agile players. And as you see, I've gone with a strong uh, a strong player, Matic, and an agile player like Fred. I've got a strong player with Firmino and a more agile dribbler with Kovacic. He's, he's, he's way more agile. He's got 84 agility, 85 balance in game. Uh, he's got 88 plus four dribbling in game as well. He's way more of a dribbler than Firmino is, and uh, Firmino is more of a stronger player, uh, and a taller player, and he's got way more strength in game, and uh, and that is the way that I was balancing those guys. Now, over at the striker spots, on the left, we have got um, one of my favorite strikers that... And I keep saying my favourite, but honestly, I've really enjoyed Lacazette this game. Um, he's not a scorer. He really is not a scorer. And it, it's stupid to think that you put him at striker when he's not a scorer. But he just holds the ball up really well. And he's really good at, at getting assists. On my Rogue Glory account, he's really good at getting assists as well. Um, and I will jump over on that account in just a second and show you guys the team I'm using to match the sort of formula. Um, but it really is good. It, he's really, honestly, such a beast. And uh, I really thoroughly enjoy this card. And he, he's He's really good at making assists on this game. Now, to match the sort of the stronger and the more agile player, Lacazette is actually really strong in this game. And, uh, and the more agile player here is actually Rashford. He's got 90 agility, only 77 balance, but that doesn't feel that noticeable. Um, he's got decent shot power, decent finishing, decent attacking positioning. And those two work really, really well up front. Um, you can go with either at either side. To be honest, they both have four star, four star. It does not matter. Um, you can go with uh, with them like this. You can go with them like that. It really has no effect on the game at all, which one you choose. I personally go with Rashford on the right. And uh, I feel that because Lacazette has got a better finesse shot, that I use Lacazette on the left. And I tend to like cut inside with players. Like that's one of my favorite things to cut inside with players. Um, and I'm looking as well with Kovacic. I really like Kovacic, but like... I'm looking for a good cam from the Premier League that's agile. Maybe a David Silva is probably a good shout with a really nice uh, left foot that I can do uh, time finesse shots with. Because if you guys didn't know in this game, time finesse shots are the most OP thing in this entire game. They're absolutely incredible. And definitely, if you guys are looking to score more goals... On the edge of the area, just time finesse shot after time finesse shot. It's incredibly, incredibly OP. So I'm going to jump over onto my Royal Glory account. And I'm going to try to explain the method to the madness a little bit more and show you guys the ways that I've sort of broke down my formula of teams. And I'll show you guys how I'm having more success because I've gone from, I think my record on my Royal Glory account was like 20 wins and 14 losses. And I've gone from that to like 48 wins and 20 losses. So as you can see, like I'm really pushing up a higher win percentage and it's all because of this method and this formula that I've gone with and how I've structured my teams better. So hopefully you guys have a bit more success. I'll see you guys on the Rotor Glory account in just a second. Okie dokie, we're on the Rotor Glory account now and I'll explain to you the team in just a second. You're probably sat there thinking that this looks nothing like the team on the Xbox account. Yeah, it looks nothing like it. Let me show you how this works up in game. This is how I start it for the chemistry. As I mentioned before, I can only use players that are pack pulled. As you see, Lewandowski's pack pulled, Martial's pack pulled. Uh, everyone's pack pulled in this team. There's not a single player that isn't pack pulled slash first owner, you know, for player of the month, Lucas. Um, so I'm limited in this, this team, but I've still made it work. And I'll show you guys how I am looking right now for in-game. Um, we'll have a quick look. So this is what it rocks up in-game. Now, as I said, I'm limited. So I've had to work around a few different uh, aspects. So we've got two really, really like like brutes, pretty much. These guys are both really big kind of brutes in the CDM spot. We've got Ducore. He's only six foot, but he's got 81 strength and 93 stamina. And we also have Leon Goretzka, who is six foot two. He's got 86 stamina and he only has 70, I think 76 strength or something like that um with the boosts uh because he, he gets full chem in game but he's absolutely incredible he's always in the right position at the right time and his height is definitely a huge advantage so because i've got two taller stronger players i went with two more agile 
style players at cam to balance it out. We went with Leon Bailey. At, uh, he plays at right cam for those left-footed time finesse shots that are just incredibly OP. He's just fantastic. Really, really good player. Really enjoy using this card, and he's absolutely phenomenal. And we have Lucas over at the left cam for the same reason. The cut-in uh, time finesse shots are, again, just incredible. Uh, cam, he's got a really good goal-to-game ratio and, uh, and just, I guess, goal contribution to game ratio. Um... Then we have the two strikers. Lewandowski, undoubtedly the best player on the game. He's had 94 goal contributions in 62 games, which is all from division rivals, and it's just incredible. He's absolutely phenomenal. I love this card so much. And we also have Anthony Martial, who again is phenomenal. 46 goal contributions in 36 games. He's a great partner for Lewandowski. They're both really good. Uh, Martial's the more agile, balance, agility, uh, ball control kind of player, whereas Lewandowski is just an absolute tank. He's a brute. He's always in the right position at the right time. His finishing is next to none, and he's absolutely incredible. And his uh, finesse shots, his time finesse shots are un unbelievable. Then at the back line, I absolutely hate Rudiger. He is one of the worst players on this game, in my opinion. 60 stamina is very noticeable. He's absolutely shit. Um, what I tend to do is actually make a sub at half time. I keep Rudiger on for the first half just because I can't be bothered to pause the game early on in the game. I've always had this weird sort of thing in my head that pausing the game early on causes it to be a little bit more delayed. Don't know if that's actually a thing or not, but it's like a weird, I guess, tinfoil hat superstition that I've got. So uh, usually I bring on Bailly for Rudiger, and Bailly is much better than Rudiger. Thoroughly enjoy using Bailly, very good player. We have David Alaba at left back, who's actually really, really good. Thoroughly enjoy David Alaba. Not as good as Alexandro, I will throw that out there. However, he's still a beast. Um, I just wish he was a bit taller, because he loses out on a lot of headers, and it's kind of disappointing. He's not the strongest, strongest of players. However, he's really, like, he's just persistent. So if you get around him, he'll chase you back, and he'll get there. And then on the right, we've got Kyle Walker, who I was lucky enough to pack and tradable, who is just incredible. Love Kyle Walker to bits. One of my best or favorite right backs in the entire game. Allison's meh. Most keepers, in my opinion, make the same mistakes. Allison makes some god tier saves, but he also makes some absolutely stupid, stupid errors. So I think that it kind of balances it out, and you know, it's each to their own, I guess, with goalies. You can make your own decision on goalies, though. That's just my opinion. But that is what my team looks like on the Rogue Glory account. Hopefully, this video was kind of just a bit a bit of in-depth explanation and helpful to you guys. I'm trying to like help you guys see the way I see the game. I personally have had a really rough time in the game as of recent. Um if you follow me on Twitter, you already know that I've just been, I've been in a tough spot with the game, but I think I finally found a little bit of rhythm and a little bit of, uh, of what works. So hopefully it continues to work and hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and it works for you guys as well. Let me know if you find it helpful. I'd really appreciate the, uh, the feedback and, uh, I'd love to know if you guys want more videos like this, where I just kind of just discuss my opinions on the game and how I work things. Um, in terms of subs as well. The only really two two or three subs I bring on is usually just Eric Bailly and Lingard. Sometimes I will bring on Emre Chan at left center, uh, left CDM for Decore, but that's only if Decore is really annoying me. Apart from that, not really. So if you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later.